Hi everybody, it's Georgia Reed from Cybercrime Magazine. I'm here in Toronto with Jerry Wynn. He is the VP of Threat Management and Incident Response at Herjavec Group. Thanks for meeting with me today, Jerry. Oh, it's a pleasure. Uh, it's great to meet you. I am super excited to be meeting with the leaders from Herjavec Group today. And specifically, you are threat management uh, leadership for this team. So tell me a little bit about yourself and how you got into cybersecurity, how long you've been at Herjavec Group. Sure thing. So my cybersecurity career started around 2003. I was actually in the United States Marine Corps. I was in the infantry battalion. So uh, while I was doing that, I always had a knack for computers. You know, I started at a very young age putting computers together or whatnot prior to joining the Marine Corps. I actually joined the Marine Corps to take a break from all of that. Oh, wow. So about six years in, I, I injured myself and I had to change my job. So I went back to the thing I was good at, which was airport computers. Right? And the Marine Corps had this new division, you know, and they were looking for people to join the, the data communications division. So I, I volunteered to join that just so I could stay in the Marine Corps. I had every intention of doing the 20 years in, you know, making that a career. So while I was uh, doing, uh, while I transferred to the Marine, to the data communication side of the house, you know, one of the first things that that side of the house realized was I used to be in the infantry. Mm. So my first assignment as a data communications Marine was actually to be a general's bodyguard. Oh, wow. Right, so I, uh, I handled all of his communications and his uh, physical security detail work as well. You know, and that taught me a lot about you know, security in itself, you know, uh, be it physical security and, and at the time to signal uh, security, which later on became cybersecurity for the Marine Corps. You know, I was protecting him and all of his communication. So I had to make sure things were secure, that we were set up properly, you know, and all that good stuff. So shortly after that, I got transferred to Quantico, Virginia, where mm -hmm. it was uh, the Marine Corps' network operations center. Mm -hmm. And I joined the computer emergency response team. Mm -hmm. And from there, you know, I was, I was the analyst on the ground. We took in data uh, sources from all over the world, basically any packet, if you will, that traversed the Marine Corps network hit my unit first before it went out to the destination. Okay. All right, so kind of a front lines defense type of operation. And I ran right. that operation for about two years. And uh, I got out of the Marine Corps, a friend of mine, he was uh, currently at, at, a, at a small startup, which turned out to be a very big company later on. But he asked me to join, join that company. And I started there as a network analyst, mm -hmm. uh, log analysis type of skill set work my way up to becoming a technical director of computer forensics. So my background in cybersecurity has always been computer forensics. I was a very passionate uh, forensic analyst. Wow. All right. Uh, so that was uh, probably nine years in at this point, you know, and you know, I, that was when I started realizing that, you know, threat intelligence played a huge role in what I do day, day to day doing analysis. So when we responded to incident, uh, to major incidents or major breaches at companies, you know, we, we wanted to move faster. Mm -hmm. you know, so utilizing things like threat intelligence of not the, you know, what malware is being used, but who is using that malware or, or who is going to attack this company. You know, taking those uh, TTPs, if you will, and applying it to our investigation to move the investigation faster. You know, we wanted to help our clients uh, get out of what is the worst days of their careers, basically, sure. you know, during a major breach like that. Mm -hmm. you know, we wanted to get them out of that as soon as possible. So utilizing things such as threat intelligence helped us there. Oh, so I, I spent about nine and a half, almost 10 years in the civilian sector before the U.S. government came calling again. Oh, really? Yeah, so I, I joined the Department of Energy, specifically the Pacific Northwest National Laboratory in uh, Tri-Cities, Washington. So if you ever look on a map, we're actually four hours east of Seattle, kind of in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> so I joined, I joined the laboratory there where I, I helped design a cybersecurity operations center mm -hmm. uh, purely on the threat intelligence led. That means everything that we did from alerting to detections was threat intel based. We, we profiled our, ourselves to kind of come up with, here are the things that this laboratory is known for. Who's willing to steal this data? Oh, wow. All right. okay. And then we prioritize everything based off of, you know, who's going to steal it and how they're going to do it. So we map all of our detections to, you know, the MITRE attack framework, for example, to automate a lot of the, the basics, a lot of the the tier one task we, we automated. It was a pretty big achievement for us uh, at, at that lab. It was the first of its kind in, in the DOE. Uh, shortly after uh, I landed there, uh, 
think it was almost exactly a year later, you know, uh, Robert and Ira came calling. Oh, yeah? <laughs> so they found you. Yes, they found me. Um, you know, and we had a very good conversation. This is why I really liked the Hirchbeck group. Me and Ira had a conversation, you know, first. You know, and it was, we didn't talk about opportunities or anything. We talked about cybersecurity. Mm-hmm. You know, where, where it's going, what, you know, what it looks like, what the landscape's going to be, what our, what our thoughts were on, you know, cybersecurity as a whole. You know, the industry, the good guys, the bad guys. In, in my mind, I was like, wow, this is, this is somebody that, you know, operates at that level, you know, very, right. very strategic you know, level, you know, uh, and, you know, I guess we just kind of had a moment, right? And, and we left that at that. You know, so I was, so after that, you know, I was on my way to the DOE cyber conference for, mm-hmm. to speak a, about the SOC, the CSOC that we had built, mm-hmm. kind of advertise it to the rest of the enclave, you know, to show that this method works. Mm-hmm. So uh, I met Robert in, uh, in Austin, Texas. It was, uh, he had a seminar, I was at the conference, two separate uh, events, and we just so happened to, to meet up, have a cup of coffee. You know, and, and Robert uh, was describing, you know, the, what threat intelligence means, you know, how it, you know, how it benefits, you know, uh, our customers now, his customers his at customers, the time, sure. right? Enterprise levels. You know, yeah, enterprise level type of, uh, of threat intelligence. I'm like, wow, you know, that's, that's my passion. You know, that's what I, I just got done doing, you know, for the, the Signal Quest National Laboratory. You know, so we kind of had a conversation where it's like, you know, that sounds like, you know, you, you you know, I told Robert at the time, I was like, that sounds like, you know, you, you got, you know, quite the challenge. You know, let's, you know, so, you know, after that conversation, I think two weeks later, I was, I was a Hertzbeck uh, employee. employee. Oh, wow. <laughs> right? um, you know, so. So how many years have you been with the company now? I've been here for four months. Oh, so you're new. Yes. Fa- fairly new. Yeah, so fairly new. Congratulations. Thank you. you so know, it's a very new function for her different group. Um, so. Based on what we talked about before, you've amalgamated experts here from advisory services team, threat hunting teams, incident response teams. So how are you going about this practice at Herjavik Group and how are you supporting customers with all of this knowledge that you're bringing in from your experience at the DOE? So that's a great question, you know, and, you know, like I said, threat intelligence and threat management is a big passion of mine. I truly believe, you know, that you know, we need to start as, as an industry, we need to start there, you know, so, and that's why my title actually says threat management before it says incident response. We want to bring threat intelligence to every single aspect of all the business lines that are under me, be it incident response, threat hunting, threat intelligence, pen testing, red teaming, vulnerability scanning, you know, we want to bring the the threat intelligence to our customers and help uh, enhance all of those services that way. You know, uh, one of the scenarios I always like to draw out is, you know, everybody can get a pen test done, right? Uh, but, you know, when, as a customer and me having my experience as an internal uh, leader for a cybersecurity operations center, whenever I got a pen test report, it's like, that's awesome, but how does it really affect me? Mm-hmm. Like. You know, here's you know a list of say ten things I need to go fix. And now what do I do with this? Right now, what do I do with this? I have limited resources. I have limited budget. Which ones you know should I prioritize? Mm-hmm. You know, and one of the things that we're that we're trying to bring forward here at Hertzberg Group is when we do a pen test, let's apply some good intelligence to it. You know, we do a pen test, for example, for a manufacturing company. Excuse me, mm-hmm. for a, a manufacturing company. You know what's what's likely going to be stolen there? You know, and who's likely going to be the ones that's stealing that data? Right, you know, like so you did at the lab. Exactly, you know, so we want to bring that, that type of mentality to our, you know, to, to our methodologies. You know, so during a pen test, we're not just going in there and doing a generic pen test or seeing what works or you know, breaking our way in through whatever means necessary, but let's take a step back and be very tactical about it. You know, a manufacturing company you know, these are the people that are likely going to attack it. Here's how they're going to do it. Let's simulate that. Mm-hmm. And let's truly test this network, you know, that way. And those are the types of enhancements that we want to bring to our customers. Where does the red team come in when it, you know, when you're managing your um, your employees here? How does that come into play for your customers? And how are you going about hiring more red team people? Wow, so that's a, that's a dual welding question there. So let's start with, you know, how a red team assessment benefits a customer. Let's, okay. let's start with that. 
Sure. So when we do a red team assessment, uh, it's basically a, a no rules assessment, right? So we, we ask the customer, what's your most prized possession, right? Name your, your top five things if you were to the lose. The crown jewels. The crown jewels, sure. all right? Name the crown jewels. And if you were to lose, lose them, you know, would that be grave danger to your company? Right, so we, we establish that, and then we establish you know, certain rules, if you will, around that data. You know, for example, a financial institution, you know, one of their priorities might be fraudulent wires. Mm. You know, so we would say, okay, Red Team, here's what we're going to do here. Their, their main concern is if somebody could break in and transfer money out. So let's simulate that. Mm -hmm. So here's the customer's, for example, here's the customer's website. That's all we get to start with. Right. Right. So the red team goes in, they do whatever they can to break in, and their number one goal you know, is to either simulate or actually transfer a, an amount of money out. Sure. Right. So can we successfully break in? Yep. Can we successfully break in and, and then do something? Data. Yeah. Exactly. Whereas a pen test, you just, can we break in? Uh huh. Right. So that's the key difference there. Red team is going to break in and they're going to do something that impacts the business. Hmm. Now, your second question of, you know, hiring red yes. teamers. Yes, you're expanding this service yes. for a purchasing group, so. Correct. So, I like to, when, when I talk about recruiting and hiring, I like to talk about the industry as a whole, right? So, you know, the cybersecurity industry right now, you know, if you look at any report, there's thousands of jobs that, are, that needs to be filled. You right. Know? So, it's a very competitive market, you mm -hmm. know, so recruiting and hiring is very challenging for anybody. I have plenty of friends in my same position across the entire industry, and we all face the same challenges. You know, we want to hire rock stars. You know, there's only so many of those available. You know, so we have to open up the pool a little bit. You know, one of one of my goals, you know, in, in an ideal world is, you know, I want to hire those college students or the military guys, you mm -hmm. know, just coming out. You know, with you know, with that type of experience mentality, we can mold them to be the rock stars that we need. You know, and every junior analyst you know, that I like to hire is, isn't is focused on just one cybersecurity skill set. I want to build a pyramid out of everybody. Mm -hmm. you know, I want that skill set, the foundational skill sets. You know, because if, if I look back at my career, I had fantastic mentors that told me this. You know, in order for, you know, in order for us to grow as technicians, we need to think about the long game. Mm -hmm. All right, so I was exposed to computer forensics, log analysis, pen testing, red teaming, uh, you know, just enough to figure out where my passions lie. And then they just harnessed my passion and drove me to, you know, what the business needed. Right. You know, and that's what I want to do for every junior analyst that comes my way. Very good, very interesting. So is threat hunting on the rise across your enterprise customer base? Absolutely, you know, so it, it goes back to threat intelligence again, you know, so, you know, threat hunting, sure, it's a kind of a, a buzzword out there right now, right? You know, so, but the actual act of hunting, you know, is still fairly new. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of people, you know, they, they know they want, you know, threat hunting, but when it comes down to, you know, what is it actually is, it's actually defined by each one of our customers. You know, we go back to addressing crown jewels, you know, instead of on the red teaming side where they break in and try, try to steal the crown jewels. Now we have to come up with a theory of, you know, have the crown jewels been accessed yet? Right. And if they have, how would somebody have done that? And who are they? Yep, and who are they? Mm -hmm. you know, so then we start creating profiles of you know, these types of methodologies of accessing the, the crown jewels, and then we go and hunt the enterprise for those artifacts. Interesting. All right, so uh, you know, lots of customers nowadays understand, they understand the threat. You know, it, it's out there. You know, I think a few years ago, somebody said, you know, we need to operate as if we've already been compromised. You know, so a lot of companies are still under that. You know, and with the news and you know the breach disclosures these days, you know, it, 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 I would say it's the smart move. Right. You know, you know always assume somebody's going to attack you. Prepare the question for the worst. prepare for the worst. And what does the worst look like? And let's go hunt for the worst. Got you it. Know, so lots of customers. You know, like you, uh, like you said, across many enterprises are looking for this service because it's a very particular set of skills that a person needs to have for it. You know, and fortunately for us, we brought that skill set in-house here at Hergevac. Congrats. That's really, really interesting. Um, I want to talk about something that you're doing at Hergevac Group, which is developing these strategic roadmaps for customers. It sounds like you were touching on that 
when you're saying, you know, who might be doing this, who might be breaking in, what will they be wanting to steal, and let's plan for this for the long term. So talk about the road mapping that you do um, with your team in, in threat management and preparing for these incidents. You know, that's, that's a, a great question too. You know, I, whenever I've spoken to clients, you know, when I was uh, in my consulting roles for the last, you know, 10 years or so, every time we get to a customer, you know, it, one, it's the worst day of their careers, more than likely. Right. right? Uh, major breaches happen. So, you know, we do our best to recover from that breach, you know, and help our customers the news, out. And they're, they're on the new publicity. And yep, exactly. Terrible, right? So all of those things, you know, so... You know, when we once you know we we clear the, the mud out of the water for that, you know, we we always help the customers think strategically. You know, let's come up with, and we know about budget restraints, resource restraints. So a time, a strategic timeline is always beneficial immediately after one of these events, or even before, so you can prepare for it. Mm-hmm. You know, and one of the things that I always like to start out for these timelines is let's do a threat profile. You know, let's let's take a look at who's who's out there. You know, who wants to steal your data. Then let's create you know a strategic timeline based off of that. You know, for example, you know the first step should probably do a technology assessment. What kind of firewalls do you have in place? What kind of cybersecurity technologies do you have in place? You know, are you up to date with you know your endpoint protection schemes? You know, and let's take a look at all of that and let's do that assessment. See where you're at. You know, see what you need help with, and then from there, we build out the timeline. You know, based on the customer's needs, be it two years, three years, five years, or whatnot. You know, most of, on average, I always recommend anywhere between a three and a five year plan. Mm-hmm. You know, just because of the restraints I, you know, I listed out before. You know, where it, it's it's both strategic and tactical. You know, so for example, you know, a strategic you know, year one would be, let's do a full security program assessment. What are you missing? What are you good at? Areas of improvement that you, that you need uh, to have improved. Then year two, let's take a look at, at it tactically. You know, we've established the strategic year one. Mm-hmm. Year two, let's test all of those things. Mm-hmm. Let's bring in a pen test program. Let's uh, yeah, let's do, yeah. you know, let's do a simulation of a breach and see if the program assessment from year one, you know, prepared you for this breach. You know, year year three, you know, let's do a full blown red team to test what we've developed based off of year one and year two. And those are the types of timelines I always like to recommend to our customers. You know, we can definitely go you know, very technical way into the details, but at a high level, that's the type of timeline timeline that you know, that we always recommend out to our customers. Just before we go, Jerry, is there anything that you're specifically excited about that the future is bringing with Herjavec Group as, as far as this is concerned? Absolutely. So the future you know, for the Herjavec Group, in, in my eyes, and one of the main reasons why I came is I came to Hirschberg Group is you know our managed uh, security services side of the house you know with our virtual SOC, you know, that exposes me and my team to a lot of data, right? So we're not only helping one customer, we're actually helping all of our customers. You know, at any given point in time, you know something happens, you know, in a managed uh, security service client, we can jump on that, grab all those artifacts, and start distributing it out to the rest of you know our customer base. You know, give it back out to the community. And, you know, that's something that excites me every day coming to her to back. That's, that's great. It sounds like you're doing a lot of interesting things and there's a lot of growth going on. So really appreciate your time. Thank you. Thanks. It was my pleasure. pleasure.